let me introduce Michael to you. I have to remind myself to to look at every aspect because Michael and I, we um, share a great friendship. And also I have the honor to see Michael in roughly 48 hours and have a coffee with him in Berlin. So um, think of that, Michael. You live in Berlin, Mitte. Yeah, so in the center of Berlin. Um, you, I think you moved there some years ago, so you're not originally from Berlin. Um, that would be my first question um, in a second. And uh, you into many things, I think you have. You facilitate, you run a gallery in Berlin. So this is something where I could meet you. Sometimes you play piano on the streets of Berlin. A lot of times we can see you on beautiful summits like this. So let me say hello and welcome to the Ikigai Summit, the very first. It's an honor to have you here. We also got um, into yeah, a friendship with Nick, who's also here with us when we introduced Nick and his work to the German audience. And besides that, yeah, you studied theology, theology and you're interested in so much political, social work. I was really so touched when you and with your friends and your community opened a church for the refugees from Ukraine. So I, I, I'm, I'm not sure where to start, Michael, but um, maybe we start with, you're now living in Berlin, but um, you were not always in Berlin. Can you tell us a little bit about your story and maybe also how music came into your life, Michael? Yes, so I'm very happy to be here. Thanks, Matoki. Yes. And thanks, Nina, um, for your talk. And um, yeah, this is, uh, by the way, this is the last time I think I would play in 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 front of this beautiful, really uh, real life wall. It's not like a wallpaper. So, but because next week um, I will really move into my another apartment. So this is really the last one, Motoki. This is really epic. Uh, <laughs> it's really sad this beautiful wall so it's like this white brown and i am in the middle of it you know this is very interesting so this is i'm in the middle of this two worlds of sometimes is the world uh, for me really bright and sometimes <laughs> uh, it, it maybe it has it belongs very good to ikigai um and the life yeah um, And I think this is also um, maybe this is what you asked that I moved five years ago from Fra from beautiful city Frankfurt. This is really one of my hard cities. Um, it has not the best image, but if you really get to know Frankfurt, and this is maybe maybe like also an ikigai thought of me that if you really get in into something that you maybe first you think ah, okay it's not like hmm. but frankfurt is really like a very amazing city it's the most international city after london in mm -hmm. europe and um it is so diverse and so interesting um and at the same time it, it was my first place of also having like a first um, life crisis so uh, <laughs> um Yeah, so it was my first years uh, to uh, in my working life, and I tried to start something uh, like a um, social project in the Bahnhofsviertel, and I had a clear vision of um, bringing some people together um, on, on one table mm -hmm. uh, in this neighborhood. Um, it's it's like a very diverse neighborhood and a very very extreme neighborhood of um, the skyscrapers, but also a lot of artists came into this um, into this um neighborhood but also there's a huge c truck scene and um and it's very very international so yeah and um, i had a i thought of to to build uh, or to open up an open community for mm. for this neighborhood or to to maybe to give a new idea how to live together in this very globalized so in frankfurt is like a global global village mm -hmm. and, and my my idea was to how how we can we can find ways to bring all this different kind of people together so and i saw a long table at the streets in the Bahnhofsviertel where people together eat um, mm -hmm. and um but at the same time um, um this vision was very like um, it frightened me so it, it was a little bit also scary for me and um i um i felt also very much um, yeah sadness about it about about so it was like a on the one point a, a big laugh for this mm, setting and another point a, a great fear um a great or a, a big fear of is this possible uh, 
I am too visionary for this, too young. And um, and then to sum it up, I um, I got very honest to me and a good friend um, asked, asked me, um, how are you, Michael? So it was like a really easy question, like, how are you? And it was like um, this simple question uh, made so much in me. Um, <clears throat> and it, it said some... I, um, from this point, I, I could be very honest and it was like, okay, I think I am, I have a lot of fear towards this project. Um, I am maybe too young. Um, I maybe not have not too much experience. Um, and, and then, um, I stopped this project and then I fall down like in a hole because, um, all my life I was very not caring about problems and everything what I wanted to do, I, I could do. And um, I was a brave young man. Mm -hmm. And then that was my first experience that my, that to be brave, um, yeah, get me in, into another way. And, um, in, and in this time, uh, I mean, for the first time I felt uh, such, um, that life is not so easy than I expected. <laughs> And um, and in this time, um, I brought my piano back into my life because so it, as a child, um, my mom forced me to play. It was not my greatest passion. Mm -hmm. And then um, there was a time if I get an adult, like twenty years old, I got back to the piano, and then I then. Um, I get, got to this project and, and the piano was not very important for me. And then this cr crisis came into my life with mm -hmm. 25. Yeah, and so it was like a quarter life crisis, um, 25 years. And um, then my piano came back because I, in my, uh, in, in the, in the deep in me, in, in, in my inner, in my inner body, I felt, I, I think I have to, take care in this kind of crisis um, and I have to write and it didn't need to get to the piano and just to bring all my des desperate feelings about this situation and about myself, mm -hmm. about my maybe also to reflect my wrong selves that I had about me, about being a hero, about maybe having the false role models and um, and, and false pictures of myself and I brought it to the piano and um, that uh, yeah there I composed some pieces that um, uh, it was 2017 and now we have 2023 six years after <laughs> and I, I still play the songs because I don't know why but there are songs that uh, have a long time life <laughs> so um there's art that, that has a long time life and art is maybe not a long time life. And um, to sum it up, the, um, to play the piano um, mm. as I want, not uh, if I was a child, I was forced to play like the teacher wants or it was like I had to play this kind of notes and this kind of notes. And here in this setting, I really just came to the piano with my broken and fragile self with my whole crisis, with my honest self, and I brought this kind of mood into the eighty-eight um, Tasten, <laughs> the eighty-eight. Um, yes, and um, yeah, and since mm -hmm. then, um, art um, to make art is something like a comfort, like trost is maybe this beautiful word of trost. Um, and trost is something very progressive for me. So trost, trost is a very progressive word. It's like a very brave mm. to forwards word. And um, that's maybe also the reason why I love to lead an um, a art gallery because for me, art has a very, it's a like, you cannot compare it with <clears throat> other kind of giving information into, into the world because art is, it is outstanding out of this logic of, I don't know, good and bad. So it, it has another deeper or meta idea of 
um, yeah, um, mm. and it has so much to say that for me it's so open. So it's like music. If I listen to very complex jazz music, it's mo the most open music for me. It's not mm. closed like maybe some pop music, and there I I can really dive in into this kind of art. Um, because it tells me that life is so much more. It has so much more to discover, and it it I, it it has the power to mm. also reflect my worldview that I have and to widen it to to spread it. This, mm. Yes, yes. And so this is maybe um, why I much more understand myself as an artist. Um, mm. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that is so beautiful. And thank you, uh, Michael. I know parts of the story, but also to hear it in English for us, like most of the time we speak German, yeah. um, has, has another new aspect and maybe another new lens on it. Thank you so much. Um, I thought about, we can structure this talk like, like this. Um, I think when people hear you talking about your music, there's like this, wish to hear something so it's just so beautiful and let me please be a witness of that because we talked about this wall i think in the last three years uh, we spent more than hundreds of hours together and um, maybe because of the pandemic but also i know a lot of people have i would even say had this experience of you know this is not this is comforting me and there was even sometimes the words this is actually really healing me this is touching me this is healing me And this is so, yeah, there's, it's hard to find words for that. Um, so mm. I have prepared two things maybe for you, for us. And one is maybe a surprise. I have pictures um, that could invite you to elaborate more on that. And I guess later on, everyone is so keen to hear one or two more pieces of your original music that is so beautiful and comforting. But um, can I surprise you with one, two pictures maybe? And you tell your story because I yes. think it tells so much about Ikigai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, and also we see in the comments that, you know, like your story is really resonating with us. Like, and uh, yeah, we can also um, see that maybe a great artist coming from maybe places and moments in life that are not so easy. And here I have some pictures um, and If I can say, I could witness a lot of ikigai and ikigai moments. Uh, what do you see? How do you see and how do you experience yourself? Sometimes it may be a little bit weird to see yourself in pictures, but what do you see? What do you discover yourself into the pictures? I just want to invite you to tell us more, please. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this. I think this, uh, in the picture on the left, um, so it, this is a beautiful combination, by the way, Mutuki, thanks. Um, um, I remember this recording in Lisboa and um, on the very beautiful grand piano. And <clears throat> yes, it, it's, I think that's a very, one of the best picture you could choose uh, left on the left because um, I thought also then um, I, um, 2019 it was like the recording and I, I thought, okay, what kind of, this is also the question, what kind of art cover, what kind of cover for the album I can choose for this kind of album? So, and it's like, oh, you have a lot of ideas and there's maybe you can do abstract art, but you can also use a photo. And, um, and then I, I thought about taking this photo on the left side and then I sent it too much so to some people and, hey, what do you think about this picture? And Some people um, um, told me that it's like a bit weird. <laughs> you, you look very weird on this picture <laughs> because if you really get into into this face, it's like weird because my mouth it's not it's not upside it's not upside. It's I think it it looks like that I um, I burden in this photo. I burden. I I, t I, I took burden of me. So it's. <laughs> And this is exactly, um, this is a very good photo because I remember, and this is another story, and maybe it, it fits very well into this photo. Um, during the lockdown, I was invited to an old couple of two, of two men, a couple in Berlin Schöneberg. They invited me to play a small concert in their living room. And 
I came into this flat and they gave me champagne and it was like, he was a very ex expressive guy. And then he told me, Michael, um, or Mr. Nickel, um, yeah, we, we love to go into Philharmonie and opera and it's not possible anymore, but now we have you, <laughs> maybe you can play. It was like, okay, no pressure. And then I played in the piano and I remember that it was very cold. It wasn't winter and I came to move my bicycle um, to the concert and that was a, it was a mistake because my fingers were cold. And it's not um, so. I, 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 I had, <laughs> so I, I, I took uh, ten minutes to to play, and then the finger get get warm. So, um, but by the way, I played thirty minutes, and then I finished and applause, <laughs> and and they were very happy, and it, and I was happy. And then this guy, who, who uh, welcomed me with the champagne, with the, <laughs> he said to me into into the clapping, he said to me. Mm -hmm. This is it, Michael. This is your USP, your unique selling point. He, it was like you know, he was really like in marketing speech. This is your unique thing. You love to move if you play during you play. You move around and and you forget yourself. This is exactly your unique selling point. And um, this um, and yeah, I think um, so. I'm not really. This is also like a tension between marketing and art, but he got one point. And this you can see in this photo. It, and in this photo, it's like really natural. You see the burden. You see, you see, my, you see it not only in my gestures here in the hands, but you see it also in this face, um, what I feel when I make music. And it's every time if I go to the piano, I really don't know what I play. So every time... It's unique what I play. Um, so it's maybe like a, it's like a song, but I every time I play it differently, and that's the thing that I every time I experience new things because I never play it again like a schemata, like a pattern. Mm -hmm. It's always the moment, and this is like for me really ikigai that um, go back to this crisis. I. I had my, um, I, I really lived for my future and it, my future was all about destinations and goals and to reach success with my projects. And then I realized into this piano playing and then now with this whole Ikigai, um, what you also brought in my life, Mutfuki, it lies a perfect link that in the moment there is so much um there's so much um, geschenk uh, so much um it's a gift. Beautifulness. There's so much mm -hmm. gift uh, in this moment and not in the future um i maybe can reach something and then i get happy so mm -hmm. now now is the time for an artist to express and yeah you can see it in this face in the left picture that um um and and then now i i say that's me it's it's maybe a strange picture and it's maybe strange because you the most people know me as a joyful man, expressive man, a man who is on the stage and smiles. Mm -hmm. And there um and this is like I hope this is like also Ikigai for me that to be very honest with my dark sides of the white wall and this brown wall to bring this back both together and it's maybe you can see it in this face. Um, I can <laughs> I can tell so much about this face. Interesting, but uh, this is really like okay. This is the last thought. Sorry, um, I really I think as an artist, I really love to breathe in the the, the also the burden um, in the into the world. And um, uh, you 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 told it to the, here that we had a refugee camp for people from Ukraine. And then this time it was this time was so emotional for me that I also wrote a piece um, about it. Mm -hmm. And um, so often art um, is coming out of burden, um, and that's mm -hmm. the reason why I, I changed my mindset, mm -hmm. um, or or something changed my mindset mm -hmm. that um, 
it, it must be about happiness and happiness and success. <laughs> so um, I have a very, very happy view towards burden um, and um, to or towards, um, yeah, um, the fragile, fragile times um, mm -hmm. in my life. Um, yes. And I, of I often see it um, if I create art in the art gallery. So at the moment we have also um, abstract art from a friend and this uh, title of the, the title of the um, exhibition is radical acceptance. And he, this is also the same story, like this picture. Mm -hmm. um, he has um, depression. He, um, he, 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 he was a model in New York and he studied uh, art and communication. And, and then he fought, he also had the same story like me. He was very successful uh, or he was like a talent, talent youngster. And then he fall down and, um, and, and got into depression or um, mm, some other mental sickness. And now he, through this radical acceptance, through this curating this art, this um, 24 pictures of extra abstract art, he really <clears throat> can touch now on another level a lot of people who experience all this um, same feelings. And so... Art is very like a message of trust. Yeah. Um, amazing, amazing. And there's so much I could um I could just confirm as a witness because being with you. And also we have some questions coming up. But I have this thought. One is you talked about burden. And I think we see that a lot in really true authentic art. And some may um recognize when you listen to, you know, I was thinking of Keith Jarrett and then you hear all the sounds he's making, like the human sounds, you know, but I have to witness a story. Um, I get to, to teach and play with Michael a lot. And then you did some recordings at some stage and we met on some mornings later and you really had to, I think you had really had to put your hands into, you know, some kind of medical care because you played so intensively for hours that you were like like an athlete, basically, who was, let's say, a little bit overdoing it with your muscles and, you know, with everything that makes you able to play. So you had to take care. And we agreed on that you will play, let's say, very soft and slow pieces, which I personally also really love. I think for the people then later joining, it was not a difference. But I could kind of, I was really touched that morning because I was feeling with you. Um there was a lot of empathetic um, reaction to it. But also I saw, you know, we have Keith Jarrett, who is like, you know, breathing into the microphone. But you coming, you know, with like bandages on your hands and you still have this passion to play. Um, so this was like, a, this was like really a point which I won't forget. And Michael, we have so much to talk on and we have questions, but I wonder if it's like, you know, you talk to a chef, to a brilliant chef, Oh, I have to switch the camera now. Um, you have to I talk to a brilliant chef and he talks about all the delicious food he's preparing for you. And at one point, <laughs> you're so hungry. And I think all, I don't know, all the listeners may be so hungry for, for your music. So would it be possible if we could now listen to one of your pieces and then continue with the talk? Because I think uh, we're talking so much about, and it, it's an amazing art. And it's like you also produced an Ikigai um, album. Maybe that's also something we can talk. And we have a question about flow experience. We come to that. But maybe is it possible to, if you gift us with another piece of music? I know you have to switch on some technicalities. But um, I will turn my, music, my camera off. And, um, also stop screen sharing. If that is possible, that would be a gift for us. Thank you, Michael. <laughs>
Michael, you know this. Um, we have done so many seminars together. And as someone who's working with you, I can just say sometimes it requires some own emotional stability to listen to your music and then come back and, of course, do this moderation. But I was deeply touched by your piece. And I get to listen to some of your motives in your music a lot of times. But I think what you, what we just heard, we just witnessed, that um, it's every time it's unique. So it's there's some really beautiful magic into this moment. We can listen to your recordings, of course. You're on every musical platform out there, which is so beautiful. But to listen to you live, kind of in person or virtually, um, is amazing. And it's a gift. And I would say something is flourishing in us. And um, maybe that what we heard, I can also witness. Maybe something is healing when we get to listen to your art and Thank you for that. Mm. Welcome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Um, and maybe one point to this. So if, if people ask me, yeah, can can I listen to you at Spotify or something? I say, yeah, you can. I'm everywhere. But um, I, I add, um, yeah, you can listen to it. But I'm not sure if if you really get Michael Nickel really there. So I'm very, it's like a very honest point. Um, because mm. I think... This, if if I if I can if I if I read Walter Benjamin um, and it's like this aura this 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 aura of art mm -hmm. for me it, it's very difficult to put it in one recording mm -hmm. so I, um, <laughs> I I'm I I understand myself as really like a live artist like mm -hmm. where where there is this aura this this aura of um, of magicalness um, yeah. And if I may mention, there was also a question by Nick. Thank you so much for your beautiful question um, about, you know, are you, Michael, experiencing a kind of flow state, a kind of, you know, is every performance from you unique? And I have to say, I think when we just listen to your music, we see that. So we are witnessing exactly that. That's so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And Michael, I I could talk for hours, but I'm just watching the time. And I have, I think I have, one, two more, if it's possible, in that structure, pictures to share with you um, that you are aware of if you see them, but we haven't prepared them. So it's like of surprise. So it's in the moment. I'm very excited. And then we see where the talk is going. And I think, I'm not sure, I can read minds here. I, we would love to listen to one more piece, maybe if we have time towards the end. That would be so amazing. And please, everyone, if you have questions, in the, please come into the chat. So another picture I brought um is this one so wow. thinking of ikigai and in the moment so there are more hands than your hands and i know i can witness sometimes when we think about 
Ikigai, when we think about dialogue or resonance, people have witnessed, you know, we have talked a lot this evening about resonance and dialogues, but when I was seeing Michael's hands moving, I saw they are in a dialogue. And I was so reminded of this metaphor. So sometimes we can do a lot of lectures, we can tell a lot of words, and then your music comes into, you know, the room and explains everything by by its art. So what is happening here? What is that for a moment? <laughs> Motoki, thank you very much that you bring this photo again in my life. <laughs> yeah, so because I don't know if you if you if you know the situations that you see one photo uh, of the past and you really and in the first second you see this photo, you get really like an ikigai moment, like like a memorizing moment. This was really meaningful. And this mm. is meaning, also meaningful for the future. And mm. this photo, I would really say it has like this feeling today for me in the first second if you... <laughs> um, wow. it is uh, it was a very special moment um, it was a wedding <laughs> in Mallorca uh, um, and this beautiful Isles in uh, Mallorca in Spain and um, very good friends of mine here from Berlin, from Berlin they celebrate their wedding and ah, that was interesting because before this picture 10 minutes before I had to play the um, um, the finishing of the ceremony. You know this if the the couple is going out of the the couple is I think in German tradition that the the couple is the the first uh, the first two humans that going out and then all the people will follow and in this time there is like an Auszugstück like a final piece mm -hmm. and and I had to play it and I was so. Uh, Mm, nervous about it because I'm not nervous if I play concerts, um, <laughs> but I'm very nervous if I have to play exactly uh, one song that I don't have written with another maybe band or something. I was very nervous um, to 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 make it good. And then okay, it was good. And then after this, this photo came. Um, it was like the the Sektempfang, the people drinking champagne after the wedding ceremony at the pool it was amazing setting it was amazing and um, there i had this north stage piano and i just played a little bit jazz smoothie vibes um during the people drinking this is the most easy thing you can do as a musician just <laughs> people have a good time people drinking alcohol and you just play music and with one hand sometimes and with the other hand you will also drink and eat some cheese or something. And then mm, I think that was after 45 minutes of playing and it was so hot. It was so hot. And um, then this girl came. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe nine years old or something. And um, she was very um, extrovert. She's a very extrovert. And um, her parents are very cool. And I'm... I'm get to know them at the wedding. And then she was so brave that she just stand beside me. She, she, she went by my side and then I was playing here and then she just um, communicated with me that she really wants to join my playing. She wants to join into the flow of playing. Mm -hmm. And um, I really said, yeah, of course, do it. And um, if you see, she really got the notes. So if you see it on the picture, she really um, played the right notes and the right. As she really played so amazing, and it was like a duet. And there's something new came up. Um, there's something. There came something. A new kind of art came up, but also a new kind of aura because um, it was like a dialogue between someone like me, like an adult, like a. I don't know, serious musician. And then this nine-year-old, I met this day for the first time, a girl. And and she really um, came into the flow because mm -hmm. I really um, encouraged her to to play and to also to, to make... Um, so there are... So Miles Davis, he says, there are no wrong notes because if you play a wrong note, you can play it another time and then it's conscious <laughs> um, but she she was really into the flow and um, 
this is the the this is the the feeling of um or this this setting and the mood of if you jam together and it's a very special moment of dialogue mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. interacting and communicating <clears throat> communicating with each other but here in this moment it was so special because it was like a little child and she was so talented and and th maybe there is some icky guys at the same time coming up in my in my if i'm watching this photo it's like the icky guy of um, being in the moment of uh, spontaneous jamming together, it's like a beautiful dialogue, but also we show it to other people and she um, she can also has a platform as a young girl to, to uh, and I encourage her, she cannot make mistakes um, and she can also be safe because I play and she can also play a little bit these higher notes soprano mm -hmm. notes and it's it's not it's not uh it's no thing that she makes fail fail failures or something and she wrong the wrong notes because i play also the basic things so and this is like it brought me to this idea of um i'm not a piano teacher i never teach piano but it brings into me uh, this photo brings into me an ikigai of supporting young people to to um to bring some life into these people and this is the reason i really don't want to say hey pay attention or pay play this or play this and yeah it was uh, it was a fantastic moment and the very funny thing is that she um so in the late night there was dancing uh, hall um, and she was the she was i think she was really the king of the dance floor of all people so she was a very gifted rhythm gifted human being and um i love to see it into the passion into the people and this is also an ikigai of me to to see what is the passion of this human being in front of me what is the gift what is and what how we can link it um, with life and and with her personality of really being very um extroverted so um, a very very interesting character so yeah I, I think also could talk for hours about this photo because um, it gives me a lot of ikigai. Yeah. Uh, well, amazing. I have planned so many more photos, but I um, I just love that we maybe come only to two and there's so much into it, Michael. Mm. And um, yeah, I just want to make also, if it's okay for you, Michael, I just want to make one connection to the earlier talk we had and you were also joining with Nina. Um, I think you talked a lot when we look at the seven dimensions of um, Miko Kamiya, there was some a lot of resonance going on here. And you, made, you mentioned communication, but also resonance um, of maybe the shared passion and that shared passion led to people dancing and enjoying. And you remember this moment so vividly. And then you mentioned dialogue, you know, and we just talked about logotherapy and Ikigai this morning. So dialogue, you know, um, Daya, I mean, as a photographer, I can I can relate to that. So it's about capturing the moment you said, and logos. So there's some meaning, some flow of meaning going, and this is also reminding of what we heard from Nina, and this is bridging so much to Ikigai, of course. And um, I guess it was a meaningful moment, yeah. What we just witnessed from your story, that is so beautiful, amazing, and it was not planned. So it was just a coincident <laughs> somehow. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think um, if I told about my crisis in Frankfurt, um, I was so, uh, this, there was a mindset in my younger life, I really can be successful with the right destinations and also to lead my people in the right way. And um, I'm very honest now. Uh, I, I think I watched people like sometimes also like not, like human beings, like objects to lead them and to, to, to bring them for my vision. And here in this photo, here's the opposite. Here's the, and that I think there's something set me very free because mm. here, here's no, here are not, here's not an object. Uh, I want to lead in a special kind of way. Um, here is someone come, came to me and want to come into this flow of making art and coming in the communication together. And I, um, I, I wanted to support her flying her own way and her, her own playing her own notes. And there is some resonance. We, we also told about resonance this morning. Um, and there's something really coming up. And this is, I think, what um, it makes it so open in the future 
what what what's um, happening there. Yeah, yeah. I oh, think there's so a lot, cool. a lot of a lot of things coming into this photo. Wow. Yeah. I'm really happy that it shows this photo, but I'm so grateful that you are here, Michael. And also what you what you're saying, and we looked a little bit about the words of Miko Kamiya already this morning, or this morning from a European perspective. Hello to everyone who's just joined. Um so and I think Miko Kamiya was also like um so poetic. And so there was clearly something like artistry in her writings of her poems, which she wrote in French and German, in of course in Japanese language, but also in English. And maybe we learned a little bit about that music transcends all languages, Michael. And we have this very first Ikigai Summit here. It's getting later in Australia, in Japan. Um, we are kind of in an artist, let's say, section uh, or segment of this Ikigai Summit because Takeda-san, I just saw that you are joining and um, we will talk about yeah, mindful, let's say, calligraphy and arts in the next hour as well. I couldn't imagine, Michael, and please... Um, also, the last word is on to you. Um, uh, this ending of this talk, you know, um, with another piece of you, if that is okay. But also sometimes, you know, when I end seminars, I say the final words is up to Michael. It may be notes, it may be words. Um, thank you so much at this point already for your contribution to the Ikigai Summit and for making us witnesses of your Ikigai moments in life. And um, thank you for being so open to talk about these pictures. I just picked um yeah thank you so much thank you motoki very much and i think this is also an ikigai thing for me that um that i can just speak um i think it's a privilege to speak to really mm. speak um how much mm. people are not able mm. to speak and about the, her uh, their stories and mm. it gives me in this hour um, also some peace Oh, that's so Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. And because you mentioned it, I just have to share one more photo where you speak. And I know also you have a, a like kind of a new passion to speak and moderate also in the social and political rooms. But here we see also, if we talk so much about Berlin, about this gallery, yeah. I think this is a beautiful picture, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here you can really see my me as a speaker and an organizer <laughs> and host, not only as a musician. <clears throat> yeah. This is the the front of the our art gallery in Prenzlauer Berg, Berlin. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. that was an um, vernissage, an opening of an exhibition, and a lot of people were there. And at this moment, um, mm -hmm. I was able to, or I, I had this um, space of to sharing the vision of the gallery, or my thought about the gallery. So because this gallery is very like in, in the setting of very high-end galleries, very, very professional commercial galleries. And this, our gallery is geographically in the, in the middle of all this, fancy galleries and we are like a rookie gallery like an Erprobungsraum we would call in Germany like an experimental lapor for young talents and here is meeting this photo of uh, this um, young girl playing with me piano because mm -hmm. I really love to give space give platform and or be part that uh, be part of that people and artists like this artist here on this uh, photo um, can show their art can speak can speak People can speak. I love that people can speak with their art. And, and this is, I think that was maybe like this, what I shared in this photo, the vision of the gallery, um, the, the, the cutting edge of our gallery, uh, that we, we bring people together um, where people can, um, yeah, be like an experimental labor in our mm. rooms. Um, you cannot make mistakes in our rooms. And that was a, also a very beautiful moment very beautiful yeah thanks you have a great gift motoki of choosing the right photos really <laughs> oh. and i really want to appreciate michael i think we have so many beautiful talks and presentations and people putting so much effort into making this guy summit possible but i really want to appreciate like your i think your effort is like so amazing because you talk and then you also play it I mean, you are like contributing with your with both of your arts and both of your languages. Thank you so much, Michael. It's amazing, and um, I wish for everyone um, who can see that that um, you know you can visit Michael in this gallery. Of course, one time in your life you have to get to Berlin. Of course, 
Uh, but also, if you walk through the streets, sometimes there's another photo I can't show anymore now because of the time. But when sometimes you get on the streets and there's a piano and there's Michael playing. All right. Yes. <laughs> but also, if we have Michael here, and also I'm, I'm, I'm so I would love to hear one more piece, Michael. Is that okay? To ask that for of you. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I can play one uh, short piece uh, where a good friend of mine says this piece is really like Michael Nickel. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Again, yeah. a short, a short, uh, easy piece. Um, I really, yeah. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. And yeah. that is maybe, maybe the perfect um, segue to um, our next session. But Michael, thank you so much for your art. I will stop screen share and yeah, listen to you. Thank you. 